Hello, everyone. Welcome to ClayshareCon 2023. Here we are cruising along through day three of our demos and tutorials. And we have Paula McCoy joining us again. She has three demos total with us for this year's ClayshareCon. One she did on Wednesday night, just for our premium members. This one that she's gonna do now, which is that butterfly plate. I know you've seen those images. That's an amazing thing. And then she has a really great orange flower tutorial, which she's gonna be doing for us tomorrow. So you gotta wait for that one. But right now we're gonna be doing Paula's butterfly plate. Now, Paula owns a company called Colors for Earth, and the website is coloursforearth.com. And she has these amazing color concentrates and other products available there. And I just wanted to show you, um, folks often ask if the colors can go to cone five, six, they can. Here is my test plate of Paula's colors. So you can see them at the cone five, almost five and a half that I fire to. And then I also use them as a watercolor pottery technique when I do Mishima. So they hold their colors and they're just really beautiful. And I love how vibrant they are without being chalky. So Paula's gonna go ahead and, and give you the pro tutorial on using her colors and making a butterfly plate. So let's go over to Paula and see how she's doing today. Hey, Paula. Hi there. So good oh. to have you here with us again. Well, thank you for the opportunity again. I really appreciate that, an opportunity to share with everyone. So let's get started. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but I have other um, video or other stencils lined up to show you um, a couple of different color combinations. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera. So this is the plate that she was talking about. So this is a stencil. Okay. It is, and I've already got my stencil on my plate here. So what I've done, and here's just another one so you can see, I've taken a stencil, and because these are cut out versus squared, like most stencils are, these some are fairly new ones. I, just to let you know, I'm sold out of both of these, but I think my Carbridge has them on his site also. Uh, these are the six inch ones. They do have larger ones. So what I do is I just, I taped a border so that when I do this technique, I'm not gonna get off onto the background of my surface, okay? so. And you can use it a couple of times. It's just painter's tape, just like three quarter inch. I also use a tape called, it's a crepe paper tape. It's little tiny. Um, it comes in three different sizes. And I believe there's three of each one. It's called rainbow tape. And you can get that from glazerceramics.com. They're up in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, they do carry Colors for Earth also. And Mike Harbridge carries our products also. Okay, so tape it off so that you have a border. See how I've done a couple of them to get ready, some flowers for you, okay? So that just protects it. Eventually you'd have to change your tape because it's gonna wear um, after you get it on there. So you can see the finished piece here. So I'm gonna teach you how to do an ombre effect and then how to add some little brush strokes because it is kind of just floating out there with no border. So you need to finish it off, okay? And here's another, this is an earthenware tile. The plate was um, stoneware that was created out of clay. This one is earthenware poured cast tile. And then I just put some flowers on the outer edges, which is like this flower here. So I just moved it around and did some different motifs, okay? So let's get started. I am going to use um, LE003 first, and then I'm gonna go to Key Lime 160. These are all of our color concentrates. Then I'm going to go to 61, 161 green leaf. And then we're going to add 162 laurel green. And I have my little chips out here. And this is a nice way if you'll make yourself a set, you can see what you're going to get. Now these are showing, of course, wiped back, but we do have the color wheels. So here is your color concentrates shown in one, two, and three coats. And this is on Mako's stoneware that they make. And this is using um, Mako Stoneware Zinc Free Clear. And I use the SW004 on that. And I find that that is giving me a really nice, the greens are holding better and um, they don't brown out as much, okay? So on the website, we have a couple of new brushes. These are stencil brushes. I have some new ones that are softer coming in, but they're, they won't be here for a month or so. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with these. So you can find them out on the website, okay? Just type in stencil 
or stencil brush and you should be able to find it. So I've got this one taped and secured down. This again is another Mako stoneware piece. I find I'm using that more and more because uh, I don't have time to roll out a lot of clay and do that like a lot of you do. So I'm going to take out the aqua splash to start with. Make sure you have um, a paper towel, like the shop towels that are lint free is better. And I'm going to take the brush, I'm going to load it, I'm going to tap it on my palette, but then I'm going to rub it off on that towel. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm rubbing out most of the color. I'm going to start on the outer edge and I'm just going to kind of hold that down. This is a little bit of a curved surface and I'm just going to go in a circular motion. Now, if your stencil like this one is real fine and you have really, really um, fine lines, I'm going to come in just a little bit Oops, closer so you can see it better. Tap it out, rub off the excess and go over that. I'm going this way and this way. So change your direction. Multiple thin coats are better than one thick coat. OK. And that is with any underglaze. These are translucent or transparent underglazes. They're a pigment and a gel base. So they glide on really smooth. You can thin them down for the watercolor that like Jessica likes to do. You can thin them down for the watercolor for backgrounds that I do my little mush mush with my Sumi brushes. But you can see you've got about a half an inch or so in, okay? So now I'm going to go to a green and you want to make sure that those colors overlap each other. Okay. So this is the key lime. Just interrupt me if you have questions. So everybody's asking about the butterfly stencil. That's the stencil Paula usually carries, but she's out of stock right now. So yeah. Michael Harbridge yeah, might Michael. have it. Yeah, he should have some. I know I told him to order some if he could get them <laughs> because uh, as soon as people saw this, they started ordering it. So I'm doing the same thing, but I'm overlapping slightly into that. And I'm holding down because there is a couple of fine uh, lines that I don't want it to move on me too much and with having a curved surface. So go both directions. If you get it in an area that you don't want it, you know what? Those diamond core tools are great to scratch out anything. Okay, so you can see how it kind of fades from one color into the next. And then we're gonna go into 61, which is the next 161. Sorry, I tend to use the last two digits um, for the next color. So we're, we're graduating to a darker color. I'm using the same brush, tap it in, remove the excess, anchor that. And I've used this stencil a couple of times with the tape is not as strong as it would be if it was brand new. So that's why I'm kind of just anchoring and making sure it's not gonna move on me. Okay, so now you've got that one in there. You can, re, you know, check it. Okay, so you can see, isn't that pretty? Um, you could cut out, uh, I know earlier, who was that was doing the the guy from Speedball doing the cricket and the cutouts and stuff. You could do the yeah. same thing. Absolutely. Use the, um, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> I need it ready. No, and go. he said he spends a lot of time on that. 80% of his time is actually the designing part. So yeah. it, it um, these stencils are great because they're already done. Yeah. But I would love to have time to do that though. Cause I could, you know, we do that with our, you know, our own patterns and designs and stuff. So now I'm picking up the 162 Laurel Green and it's very strong, very strong. So you don't need a whole lot of it. You can always, it's always good to put on less. You can add more, but it's, you can't take off. You know, that's the whole problem. This time I'm starting in the middle, still doing that circular motion. I'm going up on the antennae. So now you see why you need the tape out because you don't want to get it into the, the background of whatever piece you're working on. Just, and I'm I'm a very light touch. Let's do this so you can kind of, very light. I'm just skimming the surface. I'm not pushing down. I'm not gouging it. Um, we can even do, let's do the side camera and you can see, see the brush is just sitting just on the surface and I'm just gently working that in. Now, because this is the darker one, now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna feather, 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 and I'm coming out into those, 
you've got four set, you know, upper wings and lower wings. So I'm just going to feather it. And that's going to make it look like I took a liner and actually stroked in there. But it's almost like this will give you an airbrushed look, which I think is so cool. Okay, so you can look at it and see if you need more or less. I've got an area up here that I would like just a little bit more consistent. Feather, 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 feather. Okay, now I'm going to take our stubby brush. This is the Colors for Earth. Is it going to focus? Come on. Stubby brush. And I'm going to grab some black. I am going to wipe it out on my paper towel also. And I'm going to start on the body and just kind of doing that same. You can also stipple if you want, but you can do that circular motion because I don't have a small enough stencil brush to do that. So this is a um, mongoose hair. It's a stiffer hair and I use it for a lot of feathers and different things. And so it's great for like a mini little stencil brush. Okay, so just keep working that in until you get it as dark. You can kind of slide it up and down also on those antennae. Um, I did not put any coming, you know, out onto the bodies. Okay, let's go back over here. So this is that brush. It's the stubby brush. Okay. And I put the uh, the little flags, I call them, on the ends, because then you can see if I'm turning the brush or not. Okay. Believe it or not, let's peek. Looky there. Wow. Now. Is that as easy as you thought it was? Did everybody think this was perfect? <laughs> <laughs> now, here's some lines here that filled in. So I'm just going to take, and hopefully it won't make too much noise, that diamond cord. This is the um, L3. And I'm just going to scratch off because this is where one of those really fine lines were. So you can go back and clean up any of those lines. Okay. There's a few here that need to be cleaned up. Okay. Just to show you some difference. I did one just a little bit ago. This is just a blue butterfly, just in blues. I use CC 150, 153, and 152. So 50, 53, 52, and the black in the center. Okay, so that gives you another option. All right, so now all we have to do is add, and the flowers are done the same way, okay? Um, do you want me to? We've got plenty of time, right, Jess? Me too. Yeah, okay. So let's grab this. This is an earthenware tile. Um, so if what I did originally was I just took a portion of it, but if I wanted the whole thing, I could put it on there. Let's, uh, I don't know. Let's just do it that way. And tape it down. And then you could come in here with blue. So I'm going to go back to a different brush. And let's do... I think I did the aqua splash on this one too. No, I used 51. I used the uh, 151 cerulean. I always shake these. They're in a gel base. So the more you agitate or stir them, they're going to liquefy. Okay. So let's grab that one, work it in, rub it off on the paper towel. And I always work light to dark. That's my favorite way to go because like I said, you can always add more on. It's harder to take it off. More on. So these are the translucent underglazes. You could do them with the color strokes also. Um, these are just gonna be uh, more vibrant and because they're translucent, less strokes, okay? For sure, let me move that out of the way make noise and just quickly remember both directions rotate to the right rotate to the left this one isn't anchored on the corner so I've got to hold it but you can kind of see how it's starting okay and let me get rid of that so you can see better um, then I'm going to go with one 52, which I already have out here a little bit. Count it in, rotate it, and overlap. You could have started with the same combination as the butterfly, the aqua splash. You could have done the greens. 
So it's up to you what color. And we've got quite a few of the, you know, whether you're working in greens, yellow, oranges, we've got multiple colors and they're in numerical order as they get darker. So that helps you uh, if you're unfamiliar, that will help you know what to do on that. Okay, so then I need a little bit more of 152. I'm gonna go with some black in that middle also. Any questions, Jess? So folks wanna know if they wanted to use your colors, co color concentrates for silk screen, would Absolutely. they work? Yeah, yeah, and you can thicken them if you need to with our thickener or, um, you could, um, I've even squeegeed across a, a, a true silk screen. Now, are we talking, because I know there's a confusion out there on the market and I don't have one right at my fingertips. Mine are pink and they are silk that has been, um, been in an emulsion because there's a lot of, people think that these are silk screens, that stencils, <laughs> and they're not. No, I, are they're, they're, no. <laughs> yeah, but, and there's people that call stencils, call silk screen stencils, um, Iron Art or whatever that company is on Facebook. They call their stuff stencils and they are silk screens. I'm sorry, that just drives me crazy. So it confuses the end user, you know, they don't know what they're really using. So these are stencils. They're a hard plastic uh, material. A silk screen is fabric. It's silk that has been through an emulsion and then an image burned through it, okay? So now I grab black, rub that off, and I'm just gonna add that to the center here. And I'm gonna do that, remember that feathering thing? So feather, feather, come out on each petal. That's gonna have you some fine lines. And then reveal. There you go. Kind of cool. That's beautiful. Yeah, then, I love it. Like you said, you can um, come back and you can clean up if any areas you know, uh, ended up, you can just scratch off in between. Okay. All right. Let's go back. I know I'm hurrying and I probably don't have to. I was, just, I'm still in that. You've got 24 minutes. So you can, <laughs> okay. uh, so a question about the, okay. the brush you're using, did you get it wet before you used it or are you using it a little dry? Good point. I did not say that. Um, the stencil brushes you use dry. The only wet is the product that's on there. Good question. Same thing with the stubby brush when I used it. Okay, same thing. All right, let's get some more black out. This is the CC 101 and my labels are very well used. I don't treat myself to new jars very often or new bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap, sorry. <laughs> um, we also have a tool that I'm gonna use. Um, this is the, um, it's a wipeout tool and it's RD66, mm, I think it is on the website, um, but just look for wipeout. Uh, which is really nice because that's what I made these dots with, which makes a really nice, I mean, you can do them with the brush handle, but you're going to have larger ones. You can use a stylus or we have the dot makers. So, I mean, there's all different types of uh, things available. All right, I'm going to tilt that up. So now what I'm going to do is I've taken out the 101 cobalt black. I better turn this over. I'll have it all over me. I'm going to use the 3600 number two liner. We have it in three different sizes. So depending on what length you like, I like about a half an inch long. This is a Kalinsky liner and I've added some water. And over here on my palette, you can see I'm pulling the brush through it so that I get it coated. It'd be like shampooing your hair. Okay. Make sure. And I didn't thin the whole puddle because it's going to evaporate. So I took just a little bit out where I can thin it in case I want to do something else with that one. So now I'm just going to create an outline on here. So I'm going to press, pull, and lift. And I think let's do, so you can kind of see the pressure on the brush from the side camera. Okay. So I'm just kind of blocking in, but outlining it. Because, I mean, you could leave it just like that if you wanted. It would be fine. But if you want to finish it off, okay. And I like to anchor with my pinky. And then I'm, the more pressure you put down, the larger the stroke will be. So press, pull, and lift very slowly. Think about where you're going. Make And I'm turning this. I'm always pulling my stroke towards me. And I think that's um, a mistake that a lot of people make. 
So press down to make it thicker. Lift, 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 pull, pull, pull to a fine line. Do the same thing on both sides in this case so that you remember what you've done. <laughs> That's my rule of thumb anyway. Okay, so I'm looking at, okay, I need to come down to that first section. All right, so I'm going to start here. Press, pull, and lift. And I noticed that this, if you look at this, this stencil is not exactly, look how it's got a larger section here and smaller. Mm -hmm. it's like, so it's not me. It's the actual stencil. No, no. Like, but here. in nature, butterflies aren't perfect. You know, they're not two exact right. copies of each half. You know, there's they're organic. They're creatures. They're slightly off. So I think it's better okay. for things, okay. you know, right? Don't you? And in that way, well, folks that are doing their design... I'm they don't have the pressure out making everything perfect. So, oh, I know. Well, as artists, of course, but oh, um, a... that takes pressure off, doesn't it? Though it's like, yeah. oh no, that's okay. Exactly. So, someone was asking what size bottles you're working out of right there. Okay, so these are the two ounce bottle, and here is the one ounce. So we have kits available, and I've got some here beside me. I'll show you in just a minute, so you can see those. Um, we also carry it in pints. We've had a lot of people order the pint of the black because they do a lot of black work. Press, pull, lift, 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 lift. And I ran out and I needed to thin out a little bit more. So I'm just grabbing some water, work through that. Make sure your brush, when you're doing the commas, you, you gotta have enough on there to make that thicker. Now I'm gonna go back here. It's hard to do when you're talking and pull in. So now I'm gonna turn it. Let's turn this one up so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go back to the overhead. Okay. So turn your work, make it comfortable. I, there's so many people that don't do that. And they're like trying to do something backwards. And it's, it's hard. You need to know where you're going to go to. And I say that when I pull towards my trunk or my stomach, I have to stop. When you're pushing, you can go on forever and ever. So there's no no stopping point. So I like to pull. Now left-handed people will um, push, press, pull, lift, lift, lift. So I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Press, pull, lift, lift, lift. So I think when you learn the basics of the strokes, then it's easier to do it. And so hopefully some of the different videos that I've done will help you with that. Press, Pull, lift, lift, lift. But do you see how that frames that? And now it looks completely different from one that doesn't have a border. Press, pull, lift, lift, lift. Now you've got a section in between. This one, I do a skinny line. So I'm going to pull, then press, and then lift up to finish that off. And I like to anchor with my pinky. So pull, press, and then lift. Double pointed pressure stroke, that's called, if you want the technical term for it. All right. So then I've got a couple of little, um, what I call pressure strokes. And let me get a piece of paper. I'll show you. I think we have time to do that. So when you're doing a pressure, minutes. okay, doing a pressure stroke, you want to start with the tip and you just press and lift straight up. Think of a watermelon seed or um, a strawberry seed. That's what a pressure stroke is. So just press down and lift straight up. So a brush stroke is a combination of color, pressure, and motion. Okay, so I've got one color. If I had two on, the amount of pressure you put down determines how long or how large that stroke is. And then the motion creates the stroke itself. So color, pressure, and then the motion. We had a question. Could folks use these in the Maiolica technique where you put your glaze on first, then you paint on the glaze and then fire it? I do on earthenware. I have not tried it on uh, cone five, cone six. What I usually do on the earthenware is I add a little bit of my base glaze to my color concentrates. That keeps them from blistering. You know, when you get too heavy on a Majolica or Maiolica technique, you can have that blistering. So if you are going to, well, if you've got a satin glaze, just put a, if you've got a clear satin, just put a couple of drops depending on how large 
of a puddle. So let's say if I were going to use this blue and I was going to do a myolica and I had, we'll just pretend this is matte. I would add a little bit of that to it and mix that in. So basically you're just adding a little bit of your glaze to it. Okay. You don't need a whole lot. Okay. And if it comes out rough, add a little bit more and refire. But yes, I have done tons of myolica on regular earthenware. And folks, uh, we're asking about your stencil brush that you have. What number was the one you were using? I was using both of them. So I've got a number 18 and a number 20. Those are the only okay. two sizes we have on the website. So both I... answers that question. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to add one here. So press, because I've got a larger area. I'm going to go longer. Pull, pull, pull. And go around. Oops, sorry. Grab just a little bit more. So press, pull, lift, lift, lift. The other um, brushes, hold on, my perfection problem. Uh, <laughs> sorry. There's a new one that's out, and this is a softer bristle, and we will have these in about a month. So I'll make an announcement, and uh, if Jess doesn't mind, I'll put an announcement on the Clay Share group. No, not at all. So that you can, and it'll just be soft. Yeah, no, please. No, no, and also folks are, are really interested in your brush stroke. Paula is a master at brushing uh, on brush strokes, really. So she has a lot of tutorials. She has a great blog post. She does a weekly live broadcast, or usually every week, right, Paula, on your yeah, Facebook every page? Tuesday night, 7 every Tuesday Central. night, seven thirty. Every Tuesday night. But okay. Sometimes life gets in the way, you know. Oh, absolutely. So I just did one uh, a week ago, I think. And this brush stroke technique is out there. And this is a terracotta pot from the store, from Lowe's. And I coated it with the white color stroke. I used that rainbow tape I showed you to tape off a section and then put my uh, underglaze on. And then I use the color concentrates that I'm using now to do the brush strokes. So this is a detailed video. If you just go to my blog and type in, or just type in terracotta or terra in the search bar, you'll find it. You'll find it. It was the last one. And I usually have the video links right underneath that also. Okay. So then on the head, just to make that head a little bit stronger black, I'm going to just do that little pressure stroke up there. I'm also going to do it out here. And it just adds another element, makes it a little bit darker. And I'm going to do it on his tail. Yeah, I've been doing brush strokes for 35 years and I love it. That's my passion. But a lot of people, it intimidates them. But hopefully, I've had a lot of people say that, you know, the way you show it, explain it, it makes them feel like they can do it. And that's, you know, and if you guys succeed, then I succeed. Okay, so we're going to add one here. So just press and lift up. Press and lift up. Okay. Always rinse your brushes, lay them flat to dry. I like to always wipe it on a paper towel because you're going to be able to see if there's color still in that brush. I know Mike was talking the other day about um, cleaning brushes and I just got a brand new bar. So this is just Dove soap. So you can just take your brush and go in here and then you can work it in your hand to clean it. Uh, don't use uh, Dawn detergent. I started telling everybody that probably 25 years ago. <laughs> It cleans out duck feathers really good, but it will loosen the glue and then the hairs come out of your brush. And I'll sell you another one. Okay. Um, then we're going to use that little dotting tool I was talking about, the wipeout tool. It has, it looks like a candy kiss. And we're just going to load it up. See that? With the black. And if you create a dot for each time you load, let's come down just a little bit closer you will have the same size dot if you load it the same way, of course, each time. And I'll show you how what I call graduated dots is what I did um, on this section here. Okay. Um, you could airbrush these colors through the stencils. They're, they're beautiful. I have a flower that I made after I watched one of your tutorials, Jess, that I am going to airbrush it. Um, but it's mm -hmm. so hard three, four, five, six, seven, I have to count. Um, it's hard to do that on camera because I've got all this equipment. I can't do that. You know, I could tape it and then upload, but, um, and I do have some older ones. 
uh, let's see here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So every time I dot it, it gets smaller and smaller because there's less product on the tip of that, okay? So keep that in mind. And I am dipping into the full strength um, color there, not the thinned. You could use the, oh, look what I did. I pushed down too hard. Now I need to make that one match. That's the key. If you do something, make sure you're equal. All right, and then we've got some on this side over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I ran out. Shame on me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, it's not cooperating. Of course, live camera. Why not, right? Okay, and then we've got one over here. Which one did I do it on the top one? Okay. All right, so then all I did was I added some little brush strokes around the edge, okay? So I'll show you with, um, this is the number two round. It's the 5,000 number two. And I have that flag on there because you're gonna watch how much my brush actually turns. Always wet your brush as far as your, the only brush you don't wet is the stubby and the stencil brush. Everything else wet, blot out the moisture, okay, before you start. Now, because of this, not having a defined edge like this one, I need to either take a pencil or that um, the Statler Tri Plus fine liners that are like a Sharpie. And what I will do a lot of times is I'll just divide my plate just visually. And you can go back with a ruler if you want. And just, so I did half and half, and then I'm taking those sections and doing them half again. And you can keep going, you can keep, you know, dividing it down, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. This is, I'm just winging this guys. Okay. So I'm going to fully load in the Aqua Splash, the LE003. The reason this one is before somebody asked, <laughs> the reason this one is LE versus CC, this was a limited edition color. Uh, gosh, I bought the company back in 2006. So back in 2001, we said it was limited edition and it was made of different minerals that we didn't know if we could get. We had to discontinue a pink and purple, um, but the rest of them are good. So we just asked people not to put that on any production wear, but we have been able to keep it in the line for, uh, you know, 20 plus years. So look how pretty that is put on and wiped back. So I put that on with uh, the Sumi brushes. Okay. And we talked about those the other day, but I forgot to show you the set. So before I do that, this is the set. So you've got a large, medium, small, and a mini, okay? And use that coupon code you're gonna save because these are, they're a natural hair, they're a black squirrel hair. They're different than those Sumi brushes like Jess uses. I bet she hasn't even used her colors for earth ones, have you? <laughs> they're like precious and I'm afraid for some reason. So I came from a watercolor background where we paint with right. those only, like the fine ones on paper. And I know how terrible ceramic is for this. So I'm like, those are too nice, but I will use them because I will put aside the preciousness of the brushes and I will use them instead of my $3 uh, Sumi that I destroy um, so quickly, but I will, I will. Um, you mentioned the code. Is that only for premium members or is that for everybody? The premium have a different code than the regular. The premium have a different code than the regular. Yeah, so okay. Um, has that listed? I don't know. I don't remember. So do I'm you remember? Do she doesn't remember right now what the regular code is. Kevin uh, asked me. He's like, "Do you?" I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know. I but, pots. but we're open to the public. <laughs> so let me put it this. Let me give you the. Where's my sheet? <laughs> the public code. Yeah, I'll give you because I know we. That's all about I need. Yeah. The private one's up on ClaysharePrime.com. I know that's there. That's okay. the public code. The public code that's good through, get this, March 24th. Good for a month. Oh, my gosh. I know. ClayShare, all caps, 2023, and that's 10% off of anything, including sale items. Okay, so you see what I did? I did a comma stroke with this little tiny brush. The more pressure you put down, the larger the stroke will be. Okay, so if I'm going to, a lot of times, and the reason I didn't turn that is I'll go over here and I'll do the same thing. Press, 
full lift, lift, lift. And I do it very slow. Don't get in a hurry. Okay. That's where people make the mistake. Press, pull, and lift. So watch the flag. Remember I talked about the flag? So watch how I just barely roll that between my thumb and first finger. So press, pull, lift, lift, lift. See, it just, just a quarter of a turn is all that was needed. So press, pull, and lift. So I do the same strokes going the same direction because I'm in that mode or rhythm and it makes it easier for me personally. And then you can come back and you can go the opposite way. So press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. So you change up the whole presentation of the piece just by adding press, pull, and lift. And then you can do multiple colors like I did on the plate. So press, pull, and lift. And you have to almost say it. Now this one's gonna run into that wing. So I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter. Press, pull, and lift. I was a little generous with my stroke there. So all I did was I came back and I added three comma strokes. I added a straight, a side, and a side one on there. I added two that are just nestled in together there. So that gives you some different things that you can do. And you can keep going. You can keep going and going and going and adding to that. Okay. But I'd like to show you, um, I showed you the semi brushes since I forgot the other day to even talk about kits. This is the CC kit number one. Kind of has most of your primaries with the exception of yellow. I missed, well, it does. It has a gold, it has curry in it, which is this one here. Okay. And these are the one outside. Okay. So they're the little bottles. They do, we do have them in the two ounce size also. So you get 14 colors in kit one and kit two, and then uh, 13 to make up the rest. And so there's kit three. Here's kit two. And like I said, here is your kit one. So that makes up the 41 colors. You can order the set of 41 and everything comes in one or two ounces. Use those discount codes. This is a good time to do that. We also, um, on Clay Share Day last year, I made up a color stroke kit. These are the opaque underglazes. They're a little chalkier, if you want to use that word that just likes to do. And they are. They are they're chalkier because they have a little bit of glaze in them. So this is the bottle that they come in. And that's a two-ounce size. It's just a different bottle. So we try to do different ones so that you don't get confused. It's a, a visual thing. Um, for me, it works really well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we have, and a lot of people have been buying this one, is the ceramic underglaze sampler. So it does have most of your primaries. It has the 123 sunflower in it. It also has a pint of our clear glaze. Now our clear glaze does not work at a cone five, six for a overall clear glaze, okay? So you get a pint of it and one of all the little ones. We put color sheets in. Be sure and look at the back of the color sheets because it has the opaques on one side and the translucents on the other side, okay? Um, I forgot what I was saying. I just had a thought and then I lost it. Oh, the glaze. So the glaze that's in there, okay? The pint of glaze. I use that to mix with the concentrates to do the blending technique, which I'm going to show you tomorrow on our little flower that we're going to do. Okay, isn't that cute? And hopefully tonight I can get some other colors painted up. Probably won't get them fired, but I'll paint some up. This is the flower that I did last year, and that's out on the blog. You can find it with the pattern, the PDF, everything is there. Um, and I used the medium. This is that same aqua splash that I just used on the outer edge and the comma strokes. Um, this is B mix that I used. Um, but I used the, blend, the gel to blend it. So I'll explain about that technique tomorrow. Question? Yeah. We do. Folks want to know um, if they're looking for your stencil brushes, what are they listed under? Because they're not finding them under just plain brushes. Just type in stencil up in the... Um, search and it should pop up. Okay. So uh, folks use that search 
Yeah, um, use the search for anything, just a part of a color name or a number like 161, 160, whatever it is. Um, yeah, they come right up if you put stencil in the, the stencil there, brush, yeah. white bristle, yeah. Yeah. 18 or 20. And Polly used both today. So, all right, right we got a minute okay. and a half left. So, here's your color charts. That's your color concentrates, which is the translucent. Here is your color strokes, which are the opaques. So, these both have that Mako glaze, and look at those purples. So purples, they hold with the Mako. And the greens, I was showing the other day, look at the green here on the leaves. It works great to hold those. This is another Mako. I mean, like I said, I don't have time to, um, I don't throw, so I don't have time to, to do all the other. So um, don't forget, here's our website. Join my YouTube. That's what it looks like. So you get uh, information. All right. And here is some of the pieces I've created that are on cone five, cone six. All right. So there you go. All right. Let's see. Yay. It all worked. Technology. You did. You did it all. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. So all if right. you have any questions, you can email me at the email on the screen or ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com. Okay. Fantastic. Well, it was a beautiful plate, a wonderful tutorial, stenciling, brush strokes, all kinds of great things. Thank you, Paula. We can't wait to have you come back tomorrow again for the last day. We tomorrow. started it off with us and you'll be wrapping it up. So, yep. <laughs> all right. You have a wonderful evening. Well, uh, see you tomorrow, Paula. Okay. And we're giving away kits. Yeah. That's right. Tonight we're going to give away a kit. So... Um, one tonight, and then I think we got, are we doing two things tomorrow? I don't know. I have to check my list. I've got, is there two tonight? Okay. All right. Two tonight. There Keep track are. of all the stuff. There's too much. Paula. Thank you, Paula. All right, everyone. That was a wonderful tutorial. If you missed any part of it, it'll be available for replay. They go kind of fast. I know you might have missed a brush that was used or a glaze or a color or something. But if you go back and rewatch it, you'll get all that information because it was mentioned. So um, check that out. Now, I did want to ask Kevin something about our email. When people sign up for our email on ClayShare, do they get an email confirmation letting them know they signed up for the email or not? Because some folks said they signed up for the email list that's how you enter our giveaways if you're not a premium member. I signed up for our email list as a test, and I didn't get a confirmation email. It might not be. I don't think it sends a confirmation. It just adds you. You don't get the confirmation email. You just are. Then we send an email, you get an email. That's how it's on. All right, I just wanted to clarify that before we moved on. So we're going to take a little tiny break. It's tea time, right? Can I go make a quick cuppa, and then we'll be back at 345 with Terry Kern representing Mako Color. She's going to give you tips for vibrant under, tips and techniques for vibrant underglazes. So come back and check that out with us at 345 p.m. Eastern. See you then.